The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. In today's episode, we're going to be building an anti-pickpocket wallet. Now this idea came to us when our shop was visited by a special guest. Sounds like someone's here. Oh, hi. <laughs> well, Julian's been a fan of Ben Heck for quite a while. We've seen a lot of his videos and then we realized that he lives right in our hometown. So uh, we arranged on Julian's birthday to come to Ben's shop and he showed us around and it was really cool. And Julian had an idea for an invention. I had an idea for an invention and Ben Heck really liked it. It's an anti-pickpocket wallet that helps people not get their wallet stolen. Otherwise we'd be poor. I, I drew up all the plans and how it works on a big whiteboard. So a wallet, see I just have a normal wallet, not that fancy Kickstarter stuff. I was thinking about it, you always kind of pull it out the same way, you know, your fingers, you know, always touch the same areas. So maybe that could act as a key. You know, when the wallet is pulled out of the pocket, it has a way to detect if it's pulled out of the pocket. And then it looks like, okay, if I have, if I have a capacitance touch here and here, that means my owner has pulled me out and I don't need to sound an alarm. But if you pull it out a different way, like as a sneaky pickpocket, like Oliver Twist, you don't hit the same buttons. So it's not keyed correctly, so to speak. And the wallet sounds an alarm. Here's the circuit we came up with to make this work. We're going to use two Atmel sensors that will tell us whether or not you're touching it with your fingers. We actually have to use two because they have isolation circuitry, but whatever. So if you're touching them, it'll give us a zero, but if you're not touching them, the alarm condition, they'll give us a one. So we're gonna pass it into an OR gate. So if either one of them is not being touched, one or the other, it'll output a one. And that one will go down here to an AND gate. You have two 555 timers. This one is being used as a one shot. When the unit is turned on, that is when it's pulled out of the pocket, this will activate for a couple of seconds. That's the alarm period. So this output goes into an AND gate. And this is just a square wave generator to make the piezo go off. So if this and this, we get a one here. So basically, this is always gonna give us a one. It's always making some sort of noise. But if the sensor sees that, um, you know, you're not touching the right things and, you know, we're in the time period, it is anded into an output of beep, an alarm. So we could do this with a microcontroller, but sometimes it's just fun or maybe rewarding to use discrete logic. So we're going to do a test circuit of this before we continue. Rusty is going to make a breadboard version of that circuit we drew on the whiteboard so we can know that it works. In the meantime, I'm going to make a spring-loaded switch so the wallet will know whether or not it's been taken out of your pocket. Here's the switch idea I came up with. So when it's in your pocket, this is pushed up breaking the circuit. When you remove it from your pocket, it closes the circuit. So this thing will only run when it's out of your pocket, which is good because it's going to spend almost all of its time in your pocket. So the circuit, Rusty, put onto a breadboard. And we basically have some, uh, have an AND gate, an OR gate, and some 555s. One of the 555s is a one shot to make like one second of beep alarm. The other one actually creates the square wave to make the piezo run, and here's the piezo. So what I'm going to do next is miniaturize this onto a thin piece of cardstock along with the switch, so it's something that might fit in a wallet. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, here are the components. There's a 555 creating the square wave. There's another 555 doing the one shot, so like one second of uh, beeping and it turns off. Those go into an AND gate, so they basically AND those two together. Here are the two touch sensors. We actually had to use two different touch sensors because even though each sensor has five inputs, they have circuitry to avoid collisions between the inputs, which is a great feature if you're making a touchpad, not such a great feature if you're looking for two touches. Oh well, what are you gonna do? That goes into an OR gate, so basically if either one of them is not being touched, one or the other is not being touched, it sends out a one, which goes into the AND gate. And the AND gates all end up in this speaker. So basically if the two things aren't being touched and the square wave is coming in, then the speaker will make a noise. So let's try it out. Okay, that part's right. Here's our two points of contact. I'm gonna touch them and pull it out of the pocket. Uh, that's not right. What the heck? Okay, so just one should trigger it, but if both are triggered, oh, that's not right. Something's wrong. It's uh, it's working, but not really the way we need it to. If I'm holding both of these, it should not make a beep, and it is. We're gonna have to look into this. Now it's time for a tech timeout. We're using piezo buzzers in this project to set off the alarm. Piezos are kind of cool. You can use them in different ways. A piezo buzzer, you apply voltage to a piezo, which is in a chamber. That chamber causes air to resonate when the piezo vibrates, causing sound. You can also use piezos to detect force. When you apply force to a piezo, you cause it to deform, and that deformation actually creates a small voltage that you can detect here. You may have run across this and not even known it, such as the rock band drum set. Boom, 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 hitting those pads. You're hitting piezos, causing a little bit of electricity to be detected, sensing a drum hit. Piezos, or piezos. I just like piezos, I don't know why. Multimeter. First, there was the wheel. Then, sliced bread. Next, mankind harnessed the power of electricity and created pinball. But as amazing as those treasures were, the world was still lacking something. Something to hold it all together. Rem duct tape. And our friends at 3M and Element 14 are giving us even more of a reason to celebrate this holiday season with the 3M duct tape saves the season challenge. Have you ever found yourself in need of a last minute repair or looking for a quick solution for the holidays? That's where 3M duct tape comes to the rescue. Tell us and show us how duct tape could come in handy for you this holiday season. Whether it's for a quick repair, a creative electronic solution, or a homemade holiday creation, how can you use this sticky sensation to save your season? The contest runs through December 21st, 2013. First prize is an iPad mini, and the runner up will get a 3M goodie box complete with duct tape and assorted awesome 3M products. Visit element14.com forward slash 3M for full contest and eligibility details to enter your duct tape creation today. And don't delay, because unlike duct tape, this contest won't stick around forever. So we read the data sheet, always important. And it seems that these capacitive touch sensors can have erratic behavior when used on the same power rail as other integrated circuits. Which sounds kind of weird because, I mean, what else would you do with them? I mean, they're integrated circuits. Of course they're going to be with other integrated circuits. And as you can see, we have four other integrated circuits. And we think the real culprit is this second 555. So I think the way to do it now is to basically, instead of using this discrete logic, hook one of these capacitance sensors up to a uh, little AVR microcontroller, like an AT-Tiny, which will be about the same size as one of these 555s. Um, that way, at least, if we have strange behavior in here, we can time it out or compensate it with programming. So yeah, let's uh, rebuild this with a microcontroller. Some people might say a microcontroller is cheating or easy. What's wrong with easy? This is a little AVR programming board that I built in a previous episode. You can program the larger uh, 328Ps or the smaller AT-Tinys. I got an AT-Tiny here, and I'm using my AVR 
ISP Mark II programmer, available from Walmart14.com, to program it. So uh, let's see here, I'm gonna turn it on. And this is a reset button, so I'm gonna hold that low. Okay, so now this is gonna do the same thing that all that logic did, but with one chip. So here's some conductive thread on the capacitance sensor. I still have the Atmel capacitance sensor hooked up, but now it's going into the microcontroller. So I'm holding my wallet properly. So let's see if I'm not. It's a lot louder too. And I can also program it so it, if, it, if it ever sees it not right, it basically will not let you turn it off. See, I'm touching the thread and nothing's happening. So at this point, the criminal is going crazy and regretting his or her life of crime, stealing wallets. As far as the code goes, uh, right there, pretty simple. We just have an input and an output, and we wait about 1.5 seconds. Um, if this is released at any time during the first 1.5 seconds of this being on, it will buzzer until the cows come home. Otherwise, once it goes past that time, it won't buzz at all. So, you know, this is me pulling my wallet out of my pocket, and now I'm doing whatever, because I've been verified as the owner. I mean, granted, you could put RFID chips in your fingers, but I don't think we need that quite yet. The code's pretty simple, so if you look at it, I wired that up pretty quickly, and this much code is all it took, versus several hours trying to hand wire a discrete logic solution. So microcontrollers might seem like a cop-out, but a $1 microcontroller and five minutes of time versus all that time we spent agonizing over a hot iron, come on, do the math. So I'm attaching wires manually to the surface mount ATtiny45, and I'll put headers on the end of it so I can stick this in my programmer and program it and then pull it out and embed it. So I'll just use this other card that I have and basically rebuild what I already built, although it'll be much simpler this time, into a nice flat solution and then also at, attach our piezos here. So it'll basically be the sensor, the AT Tiny, two batteries, and a piezo, possibly two piezos to really ward off the thieves. So I'll get started on that. Here is our rebuilt circuit. I'm only using one battery this time. We have a battery here. AT Tiny 45, capacitive touch sensor. Then this wire will hit this here to complete the circuit. So basically that's what will turn it on when it comes out of your pocket. And this is a fairly flat piezo buzzer. So what I'm gonna do now is basically build this into the wallet and then use some conductive thread to make the finger holds. And I've got the great glue gun that will help us glue everything together. So this is our capacitive sense wire here, and I've kind of built this into one thin card, and then here's our pocket lever there. So I'm gonna just make sure it's gonna fit. I'm gonna make sure this is well positioned. So the idea is you put this in your pocket and this pushes in, opening the circuit. See right there, it's beeping because I'm stealing the wallet apparently. I need to bend this wire down a little bit. What happens is when it's in the wallet and it's kind of, you know, smushed, it, uh, when you push it up, it can't go very far, which means it doesn't work, so. <laughs> I'm hesitant to glue it because then it'll be stuck in there. So I better make sure it works first. It's the rule of hot glue. I'm going to use our great glue gun to kind of build up some volume around this just to make sure that the switch has enough room. Look how accurately that works. So here's our thought. When you reach for your wallet, your finger goes down there. If someone was pickpocketing it, you know, their fingers aren't gonna go down as far. So if we think if we put the sensor down there, that differentiates it from how you would pull out your wallet versus a pickpocket. All right, so I've got some conductive thread and some needles. So I'm going to, I'm going to sew now. Well, what if I was like, you know, in the wilderness and had to sew shut a wound like Bear Grylls or Rambo? This is good stuff to know. 
Uh, Adrian. It's the eye of the needle. It's the cream of the fight. Rising up to the challenge of our fight. All right, put it in my pocket. I don't have like tight jeans because I'm not a hipster and there's not much in this wallet because usually a wallet is more stuffed with things but it seems like it works. So if I just pull this out, it should make noise. Cool, well it looks like uh, the basic concept works. So now let's bring Julian and his dad in and we'll have them test it out so they can see the fruits of our labor. All right, so here's the wallet we put together for you. As per your specifications, oh, you can take it. Uh, we put a switch on it, so when it's pulled out of the pocket, the switch pops up, closes the circuit, and sounds an alarm. Right now, it's um, inert, it's not activated. And that right there is the touch sensor for the finger. So if the finger is not touching that spot, and it's pulled out of the pocket, it'll sound the alarm. That way you know if it's the person pulling the wallet out or a pickpocket. So what we should do for a demonstration is we should give this to your dad, and see if he could pick his pocket for extra allowance. Hmm? Got it. All right, let's try it. <gasps> Get back here, you knucklehead! See, the alarm is going off. It means you've been pickpocketed. And we don't want anyone to get pickpocketed. So that's, this is actually an idea to help people. And that's about it. Well guys, thanks for stopping by. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, I'm going to be playing the part of one of Santa's elves and building what I believe to be a really cool toy for a little girl or a boy for the holiday seasons. Basically like a little robotic tank. Okay, it's the kind of thing I would have thought was really cool when I was 10, but why not? I mean, I'm sure kids still love that kind of stuff. We'll see you then. The Ben Heck Show was brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com.